Hello and welcome guys. This is the third part of a series of ASP.NET Core tutorials um, which were written by the a number of contributors from Microsoft ASP.NET Core group and due credit has been given to them in the description field for the YouTube videos and if you enjoy going through these series of tutorials please don't forget to put your likes and subscribe to my channel thank you now today I will uh, inspect the scaffolded razor pages in the previous tutorial so we'll examine the pages slash movies slash index dot cshtml dot cs page model so I have it open over here index.cshtml.cs file Now Razor pages are derived from the page model by convention the page model derived class is called within angular brackets page name model the constructor uses dependency injection to add the movie context to the page all the scaffolded pages follow this pattern now when a request is made for the page on get async this method returns a list of movies to the razor page on get async or on get is called on a razor page to initialize the state for the page in this case on get async gets a list of movies and displays them when on get returns void or on get async returns a task no return method is used when a return type is i action result or task i action result a return statement must be provided for example we will browse to the create.cshtml.cs file in the pages slash movies this file this one when the return type is i action result this is the i action result return type or task i action result the entire thing now a return statement must be provided Now next we'll move on to examine the pages slash movie slash index dot cshtml. Uh, pages slash movie slash index dot cshtml this file. This is a razor page. Now Razor can transition from HTML into C sharp or into Razor specific markup. When the at the rate symbol is followed by a Razor reserved keyword, it transitions into Razor specific markup, otherwise it transitions into C sharp. The at page Razor directive makes the file into an MVC action, which means that it can handle requests. At page directive must be the first Razor directive on the page. At page is an example of transitioning into razor specific markup. Now let's examine the lambda expression used in the following HTML helper. At the rate HTML dot display name for model goes to model dot movie zero dot title this line. Now this display name for HTML helper, this is a HTML helper inspects the title property referenced in the lambda expression to determine the display name the lambda expression is inspected rather than evaluated so here the entire lambda expression is inspected not evaluated that means there is no access violation 
when model model dot movie or model dot movie zero index are null or empty. Now, when the lambda expression is evaluated in these lines, the model's property values are evaluated. Now, let's see the at model directive. The at the rate model directive specifies the type of model passed to the razor page. In the preceding example, the at model directive line makes the page model derived class available to the razor page. The model is used in HTML dot display name for or HTML dot display name on the page like display name for this is model is used. Now consider the following code is view data within angular brackets double quotes title equals within double quotes index. Now preceding highlighted code is an example of razor transitioning into C sharp. In this piece of code it is transitioned the razor syntax to a C sharp. And this block of code within the angular uh, within the curly braces enclose a C sharp code. The page model base class has a view data dictionary property. This is a view data dictionary that can be used to add data that you want to pass to a view. You add objects into the view data dictionary using a key value pattern. In the preceding sample, the title property is added to the view data dictionary. Okay, this is a view data dictionary title property is added. Okay. Now this title property is used in the pages shared layout.cshtml file. Let's open that file. Shared layout.cshtml file. Now here we can see um, title view data title razor pages movie. Now the line at the rate within a pair of asterisk, you know, starting asterisk and end asterisk, we have got markup removed for brevity. So this is a commenting style. This is a razor comment. Uh, razor comments are not sent to the client. Now let's run the app and test for various links. So home about contact, about is about page, this is contact page, you can see the URLs on top, create, edit and delete, home, about, contact, each page sets the title which you can see in the browser tab. When you bookmark a page, the title is used for the bookmark. Pages slash index dot cshtml and pages slash movie slash index dot cshtml currently have the same title, but you can modify them to have different values. Now the layout property is set in the pages slash view start dot cshtml file. Uh, right, that layout property is set in this file. This preceding markup sets the layout file. This sets the layout file uh, to pages slash shared slash layout dot cshtml. This page for all razor files under the pages folder. Now let's update the layout. 
what we can do is change the title element here the title element to something shorter to say just a movie and find the following anchor in this page AASP page AASP page yeah yeah this one this line and we'll make it short to uh, RP movie or then small p movie and change the URL to movie slash index right now the movie slash index and then save it now this anchor element is a tag helper in this case the anchor tag helper now this ASP page movie slash index tag helper attribute and value creates a link to the front slash movie slash index razor page now save our changes and click on the RP let's start the application again RP movies link yeah we get the movies index view now it has become RP movie now let's inspect the create page model so we'll examine the pages movies create.cshtml.cs page so this is this page on get method this is the on get method initializes any state needed for the page the create page doesn't have any state to initialize so page is returned later we'll see that on get method initialize how does it initialize state the page method creates a page result object that renders the create.cshtml page the movie property the movie property this is the movie property that uses the bind property attribute to opt in for model binding when the created form posts the form values the asp.net core runtime binds the posted values to the movie model on post async this method is run when the page posts form data when the page posts form data user um, fills the form and posts this is uh, what is run if there are any model errors the form is redisplayed along with any form data posted most model errors can be caught on the client side before the form is posted an example of a model error is posting a value for the date field that cannot be converted to a date we'll talk about more about the client side validation and model validation later in the tutorial if there are no model errors the data is saved and the browser is redirected to the index page now let's inspect the pages slash movies slash create dot cshtml this one now visual studio displays form method equals post you know in a distinctive form used for the tag helpers the form method equals within double quote post element is a form tag helper the form tag helper automatically includes an anti forgery token we'll take about uh, we'll talk about the anti forgery token in a later video the scaffolding engine creates razor markup for each field in the model except the id similar to the following like you know this part this, this is created by the scaffolding engine 
and it creates a razor markup for each field in the model like you know title and then say release date genre and price the validation tag helpers that is the validation tag helper is the validation summary and the ASP validation for ASP validation for these display the validation errors validation is covered in more detail later in the series the label tag helpers label ASP for that's right generates the label caption and for attribute for the title property the input tag helpers input ASP for this one uses the data annotations attributes and produces HTML attributes needed for jQuery validation on the client side the next tutorial explains SQL Server local DB and seeding the database thank you if you like it please subscribe to my channel thank you